Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What a night of football. Not a great night for Arsenal men's team. They didn't even play. A terrible night for the women's team. But here we are, people. The Highbury squad returns for a late show, but better late than never. Let's all hug. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Indeed, please do stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad, and I am here, and I'm joined by one of your favourites this evening, Mr. Demi Nariaga. What has happened tonight? I have no idea. Can you hear me? You can hear me, yes? I can I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, my friend. I miss you. Uh, miss thank you for too. having me. Hello to all the squaddies and everybody around. Oh, so Kev's not here. I've got to remember to do this. Good evening, yes. squaddies. Uh, at ease, everybody. To those of you joining us live, thank you so much. We know many of you will still be watching the Manchester United game. So if you're joining us after work or on replay, um, it's not been a great night of football, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. I don't know where to begin. Uh, I'm going to, I have to just begin with the fact that I, came on, not on air, but I was in the green room and I was moaning and bitching to Tony that Spurs equalised and that Leicester choked. And then I literally went to get a drink of water and I saw them celebrating and I'm like, how long are they going to be on with this replay, celebrating an equaliser? Get over yourselves. Ah. Uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Ah being the operative uh. word, Damien. Oh my well, it was 2-1, Superfly. It was 2-1 at 90 I, minutes. You know, I had one of those crazy days. You know, when first of all, thank you for having me. Thanks to everybody that tunes in. Uh, you know, usually when you invite me, I have a couple of days of, of that I sort of get my head around all things Arsenal and I compartmentalize, you know, my career and what I do and you know recently I've been off Twitter for sort of some personal sort of um recalibrating of sorts and I'm like what can happen right what can happen if I take a week <laughs> off really and we all know what can happen a lot of things can happen and, <laughs> and uh get back on Twitter Demian get back on Twitter get back I, I I have to I tweet I I need to get back so it's amazing to know how this club never ceases to disappoint and, and amaze, I should say. I, I That's not how I wanted to phrase it. But it's maybe a Freudian slip recently. Not necessarily the women. That's a whole different story. But it's just it never ceases to surprise us. And when it's not the club itself, it things that happened related to the club or other clubs that we dislike. And by proxy, it happens to us. So it's uh, it's been interesting. Plus, a bunch yeah. of stuff went in my house today that I uh, I didn't ha have my head my Arsenal head on straight. Um, so here we here well, we are. Well, look, we hope all is well in your universe, and we're very thankful that Thank you, you joined us because we are going to be talking about the Arsenal women um, uh, this evening too. It's a hybrid show tonight, you guys. But Demian here is one of our resident uh, women's football experts, and there's been a lot going on in the Arsenal women universe and a terrible, terrible result tonight. But I just want to double down on what Demsec is saying here. Stop talking about Brendan Rodgers taking over Manchester United and Real Madrid and whoever and all these other teams. Taib, he is a total bottle job. I am by no stretch of the imagination. Everyone's, look, even Vinny's upset, right? <laughs> okay, Vinny, you've had your word. Um, by no stretch of the imagination have I been a Mikel Arteta fan. But if that was us and we choked like that and and choked serially like Leicester have been doing for the last couple of seasons, we'd be absolutely ripped to shreds, Demian, by the media, by everybody. That was I, yeah. how do you look how do you give up a lead like that at home? Well, you know, I 
I agree with you in in many fronts, but at the same time, it's like you know the press would do this. It's what they do to Arsenal, and we lost against Nottingham Forest, and it just it's it's just wild. And what you know, the reason why I took some time off Twitter, I'm taking some time off Twitter, is because I was inundated with negativity as it relates to Arsenal women, Arsenal, U.S. politics. England politics and Venezuelan politics. And it was just too much. And I was like, you know what? I need a tiny break. And I was finding myself looking for that negativity from time to time. And it was just getting a little much. So thank you for yeah. asking about my personal life. And that, that's all it was. It's just yeah. a little reset. I mean, and look, stuff there's, like that. There's, a, there's a lot of times where you you really do have to just kind of t take a step back and everything. I was having a swimming day. There I was just, you know, getting work done, being productive. And once again, sports, or like yes. you say, you know, whether it's the political atmosphere or the world it is today can suck you into some negative yeah. feelings very, very quickly doesn't take too long. In fact, it takes 19 seconds if you look at the Tottenham <laughs> game. And it takes seven minutes from time. Let's yeah. um, move on to, to the women's um, team a little bit and stick with us, guys, because we're going to revert uh, back to Arsenal men and the Liverpool game at the very end of the show. And we will touch on very briefly this controversial story that has come out today. Um which, by the way, everyone, my my warning to you is just please be careful about what you say and how you say it um, regarding that particular story. Five straight wins for Manchester United women, Demian. Ten straight wins away from home. It has been an exciting week for Arsenal women in the sense that, you know, these three juggernauts joined the team. Um, but my goodness. What the hell? And pl uh, everyone keeps saying it's Leia, it's Leia, we're missing Leia. We're a talented team. We need to be able to cope. We, we shouldn't be taken to school by Birmingham. We shouldn't be, yes, Manchester United are in good form. But what's happened to the Arsenal women's team? This is like they've fallen off a cliff. Yeah. To me, like, in I've been accused in the past, maybe rightfully so, of being positive in almost to a fault and being toxic, positive guy. I think that overall, Birmingham and Man United, who weren't the best team for the last couple of seasons, uh, they're stepping up. The quality is rising. They're becoming uh, less and less intimidated by Arsenal. And I think that other teams around the league are doing things maybe a little bit better when it comes to... Um, just being a little more cutthroat with transfers and stuff like that. And that's what Arsenal have tried to do in the past couple of seasons, I think. And I just, I think that, that there's been a combination of, of, of injuries and a combinations of, of who knows what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I still feel very much confident in Jonas. And I agree with you that we shouldn't be a one player team, whether it's Leah Williamson, whether it's uh, Viviana Miedema, uh, we were depending a lot on on Beth Mead recently. So I really can't put my finger on it. But what I will say is that, uh, thankfully, we're still in the Champions League and we're top of the league. So to a degree, I, I understand people saying how things are, are not going well. But at the same time, it's like it could be much worse. We could be like the Arsenal men and be far down the table and so on and so forth not that that makes it any any better or justifies any of the results but i just feel that I, i'm not ready to make it all and i'm not saying that you are i'm not i'm not ready to be all doom and gloom about it uh and today for me it was a matter of uh more being outplayed by man, man united necessarily than us not playing all that well personally mm -hmm. and i liked what i saw in the last you know 12, 15 minutes of the of the match, I was very encouraged by that and normally would bury a lot of those chances. Normally, Jordan Nobbs, you know, nine times out of 10 buries that kick, you know, uh, that shot um, inside the box or right outside the box. So, you know, I'm like you. I'm a little dumbfounded. I don't know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um, but I do I, that, find hope, and, and sorry to interrupt, I do find I hope that every time there has been a game like Birmingham and others where it haven't been that well, that, that good, or play that well, Jonas, out of all his 
his press conferences, his his words after the the match are really interesting, and I find he takes a lot of accountability. And I just I like the culture that that he's creating mm -hmm. uh, a lot, actually. So yeah, um, there's a few comments in chat about BT and. I'm not sure we can just pin it on a player. Usopp here saying that we should have kept Lisa Evans. She was the engine. Um, I, I disagree with, with, with that. I respect, I love Lisa. I think she's amazing, but I wouldn't have called her uh, an engine to this team, even at the height of her, mm -hmm. her playing for Arsenal. When you have Kim Little and you have Viviana Miedemann, you had Daniela van der Donk. The, those are engines, Jill Roard. Um, that's just me. Maybe mm -hmm. engine in mood and and some sort of motivation, stuff like that. But proper football engine, that's not how I would catalog her. What about the, um, someone mentioned the physicality in midfield. Um, and thank you so much. Uh, someone mentioned the physicality in, in midfield. Cheers. Uh, cheers. I'm so, th I, I realized I, I left my, um, my Perrier cheers, have a little sip. Tottenham distracted me. That goal <laughs> I was going to get my water and totally my espresso and uh, totally forgot. But um, there's a comment here. Here it is from S90. Big issue is lack of height and physicality in the midfield. Is is that a fair assessment right now? Do you think, Demi? Um, first of all, I'll, I'll preface this answer by saying that everybody's opinion is valid, and I don't hold the truth at all. But when we were winning and we were top of the league and we were flying, we had the same players, the same height. Nobody grew in inches. Nobody became shorter. So, I mean, of course, it's easy to compound and, 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 and be all, you know, this is what they should do or this is when we're losing. But when we're winning, nobody says that we need more height on, uh, in midfield. So, do you know what, Damien? Do you know what I love, though? I love that we're at this point with the Arsenal women's team. It's yes. a good thing, and, right? Yes, you're absolutely correct. We have to focus on on as many of the positives as possible. It's something that I went on for hours on, on my Arsenal Women podcast and the Twitch stream I did yesterday about that, just focusing and inundating the the, the, the Twitter sphere in, in who we are as a club and the culture of a club with positivity, at least as it relates to, to women. At the yeah. very least, of course, the men as well. But I, I want to. I love that we're actually in that. Not you know, there's criticism, but I love that there's attention to it, and people are saying, "Well, hold on a second. What about this? What about that?" A year ago, not really a lot of people in our chat box were even able to have these conversations, and there are a sure. lot of listeners here on Highbury Squad who have been following and loving the women's team for a long time. Like you can see from some of the questions and the comments that are coming up from um, Ekomu, and there's a few others as well that I'm putting up for you here so you can you can respond to as well. And and GD says without Williamson the build up play becomes predictable. I think people underestimate how good she is. I think if you know Arsenal women's team, you don't underestimate how Correct. good she is. Someone just mentioned right. the engine. She's she's the foundation. She's the Tony Adams. She's yes. the one, you know. Absolutely. And one thing that I'll say that's might sort of bring a lot of these comments together and maybe answer uh, mm -hmm. or illustrate my point better. Th when the team was playing the best, we had a consistent spine. And this is what we've talked about throughout the history of football, right? It's a, you want a spine or Arsenal had a spine during the Invincibles. No question. Uh, winning teams always have a spine. And we had that for a long time. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jill Roard is missed. She, I think she would be missed in any squad in the history of football because she's an amazing player. So when we had Manu Sinsberger, goal, goalkeeper, playing really, really well, she's still she's probably having her best season ever. But you had Leah Williamson, and you had Leah Valti, and you had uh, Viviana Miedema. That was, you know, when they were playing at their at their peak this season, they were everybody was healthy. Everybody was. Uh, I'm not going to say that they're not motivated now, but everybody seemed to. Their motivation was giving us results on the pitch, giving them results on the pitch. I think that that's more of the concern to me of them all being healthy and things aligning at the same time. Should we depend on one, two, three, four players? 
Maybe not, but that is what you want from a winning side is consistency, especially from the most consistent players. Mm -hmm. So that is what I think might be lacking. And at the same time, I'll say that if we are not doing the best right now and uh, we can only go up from here, in my opinion. Um, Got some tough games coming up. We do. So we, we do. We have, we, we'll, we'll touch on that in, in, in just a second. Um, okay. Well, we lose. The truth is, I agree with some of the comments. Manchester United had more grit and determination tonight. We Absolutely. seem to be lacking, lacking something. Um, I agree. There was a little creativity. I feel like Paris has been a miss. She had a great chance in the first half as well, Demi, and the cross came in. Was it Beth? Beth crossing it. Uh, I can't remember who the cross came in from, but um, someone whiffed on it and it came to Paris and she had the opportunity to just whack it in there and she it, she whiffed on it too. And I feel like it's those moments where you capitalise and take those chances and when you miss those chances in cup games like this, you leave your opponent open and an opponent who hasn't lost 10 games on the road. Um, yeah. I, I'm not feeling her much in an Arsenal shirt and... A lot of people have been saying that the signing of this from of Stina. Yeah. I'll let I'll let you pronounce her last name for everybody. I believe it's Black Black Stenius. It's Stenius, but, but and then I've yeah. heard not the Stenius and St Stenius and you know when anyway uh, I'm going to call her Stina. Stina. That her her yeah. arrival signaled maybe the the departure of Miedemar, but you don't see it that way. Can you tell us a little bit about the new signings? I'm going to put up. Um, a couple more, but let's start with Stina. Sure. Well, I'll admittedly say that I don't know a lot about uh, these players, um, but what I do know from the players that we have, especially Viviana Miedema, is that it, actually going a little bit back to, to the negativity, so to speak, or something. Mm -hmm. Like To me, when I see this signing, I don't automatically think Viv is gone. I think mm -hmm. of I try to think of the positive thing of maybe okay maybe she'll be what Nikita Paris isn't or what you know Caitlin Ford hasn't been this season because of obviously going to, to playing for Australia right now or being injured or whatnot or giving Beth Mead a, a a breather or Katie McCabe if Steph Catley is healthy so I kind of see it more uh, as that I do know uh, from my understanding I should say that she's more of a straight up number nine. Mm -hmm. And Viv, for anybody that has heard any interview with Viviana Miedema, she'll tell you she'd rather set up goals more than score them and that she feels that she is a number 10 and not an out-and-out -out striker, which might come as a shock for a lot of people. But she th that's what she really feels she excels at. And uh, Van der Donk thought the same thing, and she did that. Jill Rohr said the same thing, but they never really made her play as a 10. Uh, but I do believe that Viviana can drop back a little bit um, farther down the pitch and have Stina be the number nine. I could definitely see a slight change in formation where uh, we play with two center midfielders, whether Leah Valti or Kim Little or whatever combination, and I could definitely see Miedema as a number 10 with Beth on and Katie on the wings and maybe Stina up front or, or Tobin Heath up front. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I do definitely see them playing based on what the player herself has said in the past. So I don't see this as a departure because I like to think also that if the club that I love and I adore and has a Viviana Miedema and has a Beth Mead and has a Katie McCabe, if they're going to replace the greatest forward potentially the game has ever seen, I right. would like it to be with somebody at the very least that's a household name that is a proven striker and so on and so forth. So I would like yeah. to give the club the benefit of the doubt if that makes any sense. And even though um, Miedemar has had to drop back lately, it's not by design. It's because she's just not getting the ball and not being right. able to, to get her the ball. And, and we've always talked about signing other players so we don't become a one player team which is really what we were at the beginning of the season you know all of these new pieces everything was working well I agree with some of the people in chat since the FA Cup and since the Barcelona loss there's been a little bit of a loss of confidence losing to Birmingham in the league 
Um, maybe that was a good thing to happen. You know, there's this pressure that goes with being undefeated up until this point in the season. Obviously, it does allow Emma Hayes and her team and others to kind of be able to catch up with us now. We can't afford another loss because that would be too devastating. And Stina is a Swedish international. She comes with the prowess. I think she's played 75 times for her country um, as well. Another sti- uh, signing, that we and we've seen um, her play at Hoffenheim. What's your take on... Um, uh, wine, 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 Ruta. I'm gonna, it. um, I, I remember seeing her play and I liked her. I thought she was very composed on the ball and I liked what I saw today. I would love to see more. Uh, you know, as a football fan, I try, especially Arsenal women, I try to focus more on our team and less when I'm watching the match at what other players are doing, minus the sort of tunes of the world and you know. Alexia Putellas and, and stuff like that, where you cannot not see them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I watch a few of her videos, a few highlights, and she seems like a very good uh, composed uh, defender. And we need that depth. You know, I think uh, mm-hmm. if if I were to give uh, some criticism uh, to the team is that sometimes the gap between the first choice player and whoever comes is wider than I would like. Yeah, and it's a little I, bit like our men's team and our starting 11. Yes, and I think that that is not the same with other teams. I don't mm-hmm. think Chelsea has the same uh, situation. I don't think even Man City has the same situation personally. Uh, and I think that that might be systemic of, of, of where we are right now or some players taking a break or dipping in, in, in quality, so to speak, or in form. So I'm excited about her. She's um, replacing he, Anna, right? Anna Patton? Do you, yes, I believe yeah. she'll be uh, a replacement for Anna Patton and, of course, of Noel Maritz. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I see them as closer together. I think Anna is less of a defender. I think, for me, Anna's more of a player that still ha- is so young and we still have to figure out where she'll play. And I wouldn't be surprised if she ends up being a number 10 one, uh, someday or you know somewhere in the center of the midfield. But I don't necessarily see her as a right back. I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, She's gone to Villa on loan. But um, here's the other thing, too. Uh, you know, Stina's 25 and Laura is 23. You know, and, and I think, again, we need we need that youth. And, yes. But it's youth with experience. She's played like 40-plus times for her country mm-hmm. as well. Now, the one that got everyone super excited, Susan. Yes. Yes, Rafaela. Well... <laughs> I am uh, very biased in a way because she is a fellow South American and I am so proud of the club to give, it's not like they're throwing them a bone. She's coming to help us uh, to give a Brazilian, Latina, South American, uh, a chance of a woman of color to come in and, uh, represent the badge that we love like Silvino did like Edu did like Gabriel Martinelli does uh, I'm just so happy beyond anything football related what she means to me and to hundreds and thousands of uh Latina and in Brazilian footballers all over the world that do want to come to the WSL and I know that for a fact and they haven't seen the same trail or trailblazers uh, like in Spain and even Germany and France, for example. So I think uh, the WSL is a little bit behind when it comes to Latinos and Latinas, I should say. And uh, I'm very, very happy aside from her playing for years with Marta, with Formiga, playing, you know, mm-hmm. she plays for the national team. That's all you need to say. Brazilian for playing for the national team. I don't need to say anything else. Yeah. Um, she's a she's a special player and she brings, like you said, you know, there's there's uh there's gonna be a lot of what I love about, you know, signing certain players, like in the league here in the US MLS, there's a very strong South American contingent. Um, mm-hmm. we're seeing the women's game evolve, we're seeing different nationalities, different players get their opportunity. Um, she's a little bit older than the other signings, comes with a level of of maturity and uh, i think is a really great signing very exciting signing um she comes on a free transfer as well 
And I think that these are the types of players, Demian, that can have an immediate impact on an Arsenal women's team that right now needs a little shot in the arm, a boost of energy, something to revive them as they come into a schedule. And I wanted to just touch on this before we move on a little bit here. Uh, we've got the quarterfinal of the, um, we just lost in the, against the Manchester United. We've got Manchester City on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, we then have Brighton. Um, we're playing City away, Brighton at home. We then have the Women's FA Cup fourth round. Uh, and then we face Manchester United again in the league on February the 5th. Those are some tough games coming up. Yeah, they're very, very tough. Uh, the Brighton game, it's going to be interesting um, if Inessa Kagman, a Dutch midfielder, if she's healthy, she can run an entire match. She is unbelievable, and it's criminal that she doesn't start for the Dutch national team uh, anywhere near as often as she deserves. Um, yeah, and of course, that's that's what happens with Arsenal. You know, we play Man City when they we beat them five 0 but we play them again when they're flying, right? And you know, we know what might happen. It's like the typical thing when Arsenal men play against Cristiano Ronaldo and he's in a wheelchair and has two legs cut off. And what's going to happen? He's going to score a hat header hat trick against Arsenal. That's the kind of stuff that happens. That's the kinds of results that happens to our team. Um, so I'm, I'm, I will there's continue. Not a lot of room, there's not a lot of room for error, error Demian. That it is exactly right. That's, uh, I was kind of paraphrasing that. That as hopeful as I am, this is when okay still hopeful but now you're you know behind chelsea and and nothing in the past few games has proven that we are that energetic and they're able to you know continue winning and, and setting pace so i think the the next the, the match against man city is going to be massive oh, for yeah. many reasons and i will also say that other teams are going to lose in a way. I believe that Man City will drop points. I, I hope that Chelsea will drop points. I believe that Spurs are going to drop points. I think Man United are going to drop points as well. I think that the league this season, even with, with Birmingham and Leicester not being the best, I think the Reddings, the Brightons, the Villas, the, the, the West Hams are going to get some points of, of the teams. And it's not just like, okay, you only win if you beat if Chelsea beats Arsenal twice or right. vice versa, you know. We're four points clear of Chelsea, Manchester United and Tottenham. We have a game in hand on United, Tottenham and Manchester City. Chelsea have a game in hand on us. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks. Very exciting. Hopefully yes. the women can stay strong in the league. For me, it's the league. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the FA Cup, of course. I would love for us to go all the way in the Champions League. But if we can win this league and get that back. Um, I actually had, I, I, I should never have asked you about whether or not we'd go invincible that time. I should never have done that, Demi. I, I should learn my lessons. Hey, it, it happens. It happens. But um, there, there's, if I may, there's something that I, that I wanted to mention because people talked about sort of when the tide started turning with our yeah. Arsenal women. I was lucky enough to go to the FA Cup final against Chelsea at Wembley and the aftermath of that on social media was some of the most negative mean uh whether you call it realistic or not I always find it funny how people always say themselves that they're being realistic it's not somebody else that tells you that you're being realistic but that's a whole different philosophical mm -hmm. discussion uh the comments were so negative and we had the girls were playing uh, Barcelona a few days later and nothing was positive. Nobody mentioned how if they were going to be uh, uh, competitive, nobody had faith. Nobody had. It was just like, you know, I felt like the meme on the, the, the John Travolta meme when he like it's just like standing in this open room like, hello, anybody like what's going on? And I think that people sometimes forget the magnitude that exists between the men's game, social media, and that in the women. Most likely, unless you're Alexia Putellas or maybe Alex Morgan, if you tweet at a player, they're going to read your comment. If you mention a player, 
you know, th there's some players at Arsenal that you and I have more followers than them or something. Yeah. Um, and I would encourage people to, whether you think they're going to get killed 5 nothing, tweeting it doesn't bring anything positive to the players, I don't think, that uh, need the, the pumping up, the motivation. So imagine, you know, you're playing at the Emirates, finally, when we're, we're, we're battle for the women to play at the Emirates, and you train all week, and then you put the Chelsea loss behind you, and you're a professional footballer, that's an impossible job, these women did the impossible already. And then you're you're getting pumped, and you train, and you overcome an injury, and then you grab your phone to try to see, like, oh, I wonder what our fans are saying, and they're like, we're gonna get killed, you're gonna get blah blah blah, we suck, blah 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 blah. Like, I don't think that helps at all, personally. So, I do think that we have some responsibility, and I don't, I I definitely think that it does didn't help because the results weren't. Uh, all that positive. I'm not saying that they're not professional, that they need to listen to what we say or that they should weigh our opinions. No, I'm saying that if somebody mentions right now that they don't like that guitar, it's going to bother me. Oh, but wait, you have no idea what they're saying about your guitar. But listen, right. I, I do, <laughs> I do understand. I, I do understand what you mean. It's not like, you know, some of our ma male players, they have 10 million followers or 3 million followers, or it's right. hard to, you know, get through all of the messages and i think that in the most part the hardcore arsenal fans support the women through and through and i think they face i agree with um some of the comments in the chat that it's similar to what the men go through right there's an overreactionary there's a target on some players backs uh, and sometimes as fans we just can't help it you know we feel like we have this god-given right to be critical doesn't make it right right but that's the um that's the uh, that's the issue that a lot of fans face by the way everyone is obsessed with your guitars in the background <laughs> well thank you, you you guys know that demian is you. the musician of all musicians he can do it oh, all oh no and he just did no. the new year's eve show here in the united states with miley cyrus and I did. davidson didn't yes, how, that was, was how was how was that? How was it working with Miley? It, it was a dream come true. She's an unbelievable artist, uh, an icon, historic as a feminist, somebody that uh, has lit the torch for a while when it comes to women's issues, um, Planned Parenthood type of situation, the LGBTQ community. Um, so it was an honor to share the stage with her and uh, the 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 rest of the band and the musicians that we were able to share stage with. Brandy Carlisle, um, which was a dream. Uh, Anita, oh my God, a bunch of other you know a bunch of other uh, musicians, and it was just absolutely incredible. So I'm very very fortunate to do what I do. Very cool. I'm glad to hear that Miley's a good kid because she um, is, you know, she, she it's, is. A, it's incredible uh, how, I mean, I had no idea until you told me you were playing with her because I don't pay attention to some of this stuff sometimes, even though I've, you know, it's kind of in the music industry, but she's, she's got an obscene amount of followers on social media yeah. and continues to, to kind of smash it and be relevant after being a child. Let's not forget. The ch a child star, the daughter of a big country star, and yeah. somehow you know goes through a very public marriage, of course. But then you know the core of it. You know, I love when she does the Stevie Nicks stuff. I love when she does the yes. old school stuff. Love she it. rocks it's my that favorite. Stuff out. So that's yeah. that's tr that's her. She loves Pink Floyd, and she loves Led Zeppelin, and she loves blondie not like oh i like those bands no she knows the record she knows this stuff and she's mm -hmm. a true true artist and i've been very fortunate to work with numerous child stars the jonas brothers demi lovato you name it uh victoria justice and i can say uh, and i don't mean this as a diss to anybody else but i can tell you that uh, miley is the most humble professional hardworking. It's unbelievable. It and and there's no wonder to me that where she that she is where she is, um, and and to sort of connect this with what we were talking about before, you know, one of the things I've learned in in this world and, and being fortunate, knock on wood, to work with um, well-known musicians in the rock world and pop, is that we need to be very careful about what we say and how we say things because 
we, I wonder how we would react when we see those people in real life, right? And that's one of the reasons why I stopped um, <laughs> being negative about Shaka, for example, who is a player that I dislike. I don't like Shaka. I don't think he should wear the well, Arsenal I, shirt. I told him and Unai and Vinay uh, what I thought when I ran into yeah, him. Yeah. So, so, uh, cause I don't <laughs> know I if know I have, I have the, uh, the cajones <laughs> and the cojones to say it to his face. So I'm pretty sure I don't. Um, or if I did, I would be in a, in a, in a very, very respectful fashion. And, um, I think that, you know, when people, somebody mentioned the other day, I was doing my Twitch stream. Somebody said that Kim Little was washed up and I, I just, I, I just laughed because that is just the most inaccurate statement that you can make. Um, so I just think that we, we, myself included, when I say we, I'm talking also to the person in the mirror, we can be more positive and more, um, mm -hmm. select our thoughts in our tweets better. Not so yeah. much our thoughts. We try to be on our show. We really do. And I will say, um, for, for a, a, a YouTube channel show, our squaddies and our chat box and our listeners are really, they'll have banter right sure. but everyone is very cool and i love and adore each and every one of them and we have great football conversations they respect our guests of course they'll go off on players um but even the naughty boys like newman and taib their heart is in the right place and i love again, i love just, it i love it all here i <laughs> love it all here the red or yellow card out and uh you know they, <laughs> they'll, they'll soon learn yes um, i, love, I love it when she sings jolene as well oh, it's i totally amazing. agree with we that. did that Is, song it are you gonna good. make miley cyrus a gooner i'm Is gonna see gonna what i can do i'm gonna see what the future okay. brings i don't know when uh if i'll get to work with her again in the future but if I'll i have a, a shirt chance, i'll get the shirt and you can send it to her and we'll make her a gooner. i like that i like that idea okay. all right i like that idea all right, so uh, we've just got a few more minutes with you here. It's going to be a shorty tonight, um, you guys, but already Super Soph style. Um, I said Super Soph. I meant Super Kev will be back tomorrow. And in Soph style, I'm already 36 minutes in for a short show, and we've got two subjects left real quick. So um, <laughs> real I quick. wanted to just really touch very quickly on tomorrow night's game against Liverpool. Talk about siege mentality, Demian. There's been the whole ruckus of the cancellation and us moving wanting to move our games and the premier league for me are responsible for all of that in terms of the league games there's been a lot of you know talk online between liverpool fans and arsenal fans and tomorrow night's game is going to be hot and salty there is no doubt about it we played with 10 men at Anfield in valiant form and fashion. It was just a beautiful thing to see, even though the result was nil-nil. It was just a phenomenal game. Yes. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow night at the Emirates? Do you uh, fancy us against I Liverpool? do. I actually do. I feel uh, what I'm seeing from... Uh, we spoke, we've spoken about this ad nauseum. Play Martinelli, right? We've heard this... And he has not disappointed in what I saw from him the last match, the drive, the tackles all over the pitch. His heat map must have been just like this blob of orange all over the, the pitch. <laughs> uh, so I believe that we we definitely have a chance. I don't think Mo Salah is back, which makes me very happy. No. And I, I I feel confident. I feel confident. I think when it comes to the chippiness of it, uh, I think we can we can dish it out, uh, even if we might not have the experience. And Shaka, ironically, Mister Hatchet Man is not not around to 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 give. Um, I believe that we're gonna, you know, the way that Ben White has been playing, I really like him. I don't know if Tommy Yasu is back. Um, I haven't really uh, been up. Today Udegaard, on, was in, on... Udegaard was in training today. Um, okay, great. Not sure about Emil Smith Rowe and Tommy Yasu. Thomas Party, of course, Ghana got knocked out in the yep. African Cup of Nations. Not sure if he'll be back in time to play for that. Probably not. But I agree with Amira. I think if we win tomorrow, um, we'll go on to win the trophy. We love a final against Chelsea. We do, at yes. Wembley, um, the men's team. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree. Uh, what I saw at Anfield with 10 men, how can you not be confident at home with 11? 11 v. 11. Yeah. 
And this so, is going to be this is a six million dollar question, Demsec, in terms of who plays in midfield. Um, and good to know your break is over there, uh, Naomari. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who plays in midfield and how we set set up. But the I think the the good thing is is that we proved against Liverpool with ten men that we were able to cope. Uh, and yes. sim- I think they'll be pretty similar in their setup and similar with their personnel as they come to the Emirates. We may be a little bit more aggressive in the opening 20 minutes, try to go get a goal um, and, you know, get ahead in the game. Uh, but the midfield has been where everyone has been crying out, Demian, in terms of letting Maitland-Niles go and, and Thomas Party went and we don't know who's coming in. We don't have really anyone on the docket yet um, in transfers and you've got all these players out on loan. Now we've let Pablo Mari go, we've let Kalasinac go. So there's a little bit of unease when it comes to our current January transfer window, very much the opposite to the women's team. Um, but there's still two weeks left in the window. Yeah, I mean, what's Gabrielle's status, by the way, before I say something silly that I'm about he, to say? Gab- Gabrielle should be playing in the game okay. um, so, tomorrow. I don't s- think he's sending off. I think he's the, the, the chat will help me, but I believe he'll be he'll be available for tomorrow's game. Okay, so imagining he he is available, I think he is the leader that can make Rob Holding step up, hopefully to Merta Sacker final levels, right? Uh, and this is something that Legrove mentioned the other day that I loved on his Arsenal Opinion podcast that I fully agree with. It seems like standalone, he might not be the stalwart, but definitely with somebody like Gabriel. So I would love Ben White on mid in midfield. To be honest with you, I would love yeah, to see that. that it, it's amazing that you said that because I just put up a couple of comments. I've said that in the past as well. Yeah, he reminds me of uh, remember when like Schneiderlin was like unbelievable for mm. Southampton. Mm-hmm. You know, he reminds me of that super athletic, just stud of a midfielder that has you know can get stuck in. I think that. If we were to sign somebody, I would like it to be uh, an all-star uh, center back also and maybe eventually also move Ben White because that's kind of what I see him more personally. So if I'm right or wrong, I don't know, but I would love to see him there tomorrow. I think it will be really interesting. Yeah, and uh, squaddies and uh, everyone in chat, I agree with you. There's the option of Chambers who came in and did well in that 10-9 yes. game against yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, there's the option of if Tommy's not available, then Ben White can also play at right back. You could have Gabriel and Holding at the back. You could play um, Chambers in midfield. Um, if Udegaard's available, you can push him back and play him with Laconga, maybe push sure. and- and if Mill Smith Rowe is ready to come back in. So I do believe that we have um, options. Now, they're, they're not ideal because this is where Arsenal need to look beyond the, some, some of the issues we have, Demian, because we find ourselves in the position to be able to finish fourth as well. We never thought we'd be in this position, but I was asking Tom Kant on this from Guna Talk TV last night, is now we are in this position, do the right thing and arm yourself with at least two or three players to be able Correct. to close the deal. As I agree. Um, as they say in Glen Gary, Glen Ross always be closing. So I, I agree. I think I think so. And and also I think this is the type of games where or matches where other managers that are more experienced, Sir Alex Ferguson and other people, where it was like, okay, youth got us here. Let's just get this, let's bring it home, right? And they would maybe not play in Ketia in, you know, mm-hmm. maybe not throw in academy players necessarily i understand that they some helped us get here and blah 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 blah. i get it but i think it's time to have this the 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 best 11 from now on uh, especially in a cup competition that for all intents and purposes might be the only thing that we win this year and we haven't won it since 93 not even arsene wenger won it so it'd be lovely to get our hands on some silverware okay absolutely I know that a lot of people have written to me about this and I'm not going to say anything other than until we know more, we're not really going to talk about it. But there's a few big stories that have broken in the last few days and some, I'm sorry, we're just not going to talk about because they have nothing to do with us. Secondly, um, the story that's broken about the yellow card and an Arsenal player, let's hold back 
on posting memes and pictures and all sorts of things on social media, just my advice, until we know more. There's no point in speculating um, about something that we don't quite know what the truth is, right? And there's always two sides to every story and then there is the truth. So, um, Demian, uh, I, I know that, you know, you are definitely in agreement with me that until we know more about this story, let's just kind of hold, hold, call the jets. Call yes, the jets. Yeah. absolutely. I would encourage everybody to follow your advice. And also, and I'm not Mr. Both Sides of Anything. I'm I'm not that guy, you know, uh, necessarily. I, I, what I mean by that is some topics I don't need to hear the other side of. I don't need mm -hmm. to hear the other side of Nazism, for example. I don't. I don't need to hear that. I know where I stand. This is one. Right, thing. right. I'm not comparing this to that. But I'm saying try to read as many sources as you can from as many independent journalists and people that that uh, are in the actual know, not somebody that might have. Um, I saw fake... this geezer and he told me that. Exactly. And they, I told ran, me I this, saw, they told me this. They told me that. I saw his brother at the airport and he's definitely, got, you know what I mean? Right. All... <laughs> and, and also, and also, I know it seems like uh, the perfect turn of events for the Amazon Prime uh, show uh, and all these things happening and all this drama and all these interesting, things. isn't it? But this, it, you can find that in any in any club. You know, you, if you dig, you know, there's an expression in Spanish, la quinta pata del gato, the fifth uh, leg of the cat. You know, if you find it, if you look for it, you're going to find it. So I, I think that, uh, you know, it caught me by surprise. You told me about it hours mm -hmm. ago or, or an hour before we joined and I couldn't believe it and what I'm seeing and who most people are are assuming is involved uh, even I that is somebody that doesn't love X person I need to take a step back and be like wait a minute yeah. let's, let's just take let's, a step back yeah hold the mayo yeah. hold the mustard yes and have your have your pickle on the side and Absolutely. like someone just said in chat it's the ref who gives the card so let's all hold hold off and I'm sure in the few next few days we'll know a little bit more about that. And as far, absolutely right. Hit that like button, kiss it, caress it, nut it, as Super Kev will say. Um, why don't we bring out the little guy? He was barking earlier, and if Mommy <laughs> doesn't show him off, he'll be a little bit upset. So there you go. All right, we're going to get out on this one. Amazing. Um, there are stories today about Aubameyang uh, potentially joining a Middle East club. Um, some good money on the table there, Demian. Now, the issue for us is that um, in terms of goal scorers, we don't really have any. We have goals coming from parts of the pitch, Martinelli, Saka, Emil Smith-Rowe. Lacazette, as we know, is not that prolific goal scorer, but what he does for the team is very important. How he holds the ball up, brings everybody in, the respect, the leadership that he has. Do you think this is the time? Now, obviously, there's some stories about Aubameyang from AFCON. Um, and, of course, we all wish that him well if he is indeed having heart issues after suffering from um, the pandemic. Uh, that is in itself something that is concerning. So if Absolutely. a team has come in with this kind of money to offer uh, for Aubameyang, do we take it? Or is this the type of thing that we need to be very careful of because it can come back and bite us in the ass? Also knowing that he and Arteta are not friendly at the moment. What's what's your take on all of this? It's a bit of a, a conundrum, really, for the club. Yeah, I think I like to think that any and every player, especially that plays for Arsenal Football Club, is a consummate professional. And I like to think that we build a culture and we've signed the players with that in mind as well. So I'm not here, or I would not say that if Obama Young comes back, he's not going to give it his all. I am not. I don't believe that a competitor that has gotten to the apex of sport uh, will phone it in. I don't particularly think that he will do that. Uh, if he has heart problems and health issues, and we have to quote unquote cash in on that, uh, and if it's a if it's a smart move by by the board. Maybe, but it's not like I'm behind the board at all times. You know, I'm a person that, uh, 
is very skeptical. I we live in Los Angeles for all intents and purposes, and we know what Kroenke does for the LA Rams and the absurd amount of money that they invest in that team. Oh so you God. can't tell me that you buy and you pay millions of dollars to Odell Beckham Jr. and Sony Michelle and, and Von Matt Miller Stafford. They bought in. They've yeah, thrown, the, they've thrown exactly. the kitchen sink at it. That I forgot about Miller. Like that's how absurd this is. Mm -hmm. And you can't pay absurd amounts of f you money to these players that they rather go to another country that is not you know uh, the premier league they don't have the premier league so i would love to have a a place where obama young feels loved and feels happy and is taking care of himself and i wish him the absolute best he's brought a lot of happiness into my life and i will forever be indebted to him for that the FA Cup goal and um, FA Cup final. But if we have to bring a player in, I would like that. I'm a, I'm a romantic. I might be very naive, but I think that we should get a player that is an Arsenal fan, that loves the crest, that loves the club. And I am sure that there'll be some in the uh, in other teams. I, I always forget the Leeds United, one of the, the, the forwards, I, I always forget that. Bamford. Bamford. I love okay. that player. Mm -hmm. I think he's a classy, class, class, class player. But Elegant. We're too snobby to um, go after players like that, Demian. Yeah. As well. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, um, or you can get, oh, I'm not saying that he's the right replacement. Um, of course, I'm forgetting from Wolves. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, um, the, the uh, who, who hurt his head. Big, big muscle engine. That's an engine of a player. Um, now I'm having a now I'm having oh my a goodness because <laughs> all in my when I hear wolves all I hear all I see is nevers they'll help us out don't sure worry. yeah I'm sure up front up front wolves come on guys yeah come on liver actually Ollie Watkins is one that I would love and he's a gooner he's he loves Ollie Watkins is a gooner I didn't know that okay yeah 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 he's a gooner I'm not sold on Calvert Lewin for some reason yeah I I don't I don't I agree. Not Triore, not Triore, you guys. Not Triore. Jimenez. Might be Triore. Yes, 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 yes. No, no Jimenez thinking, is amazing. I love Jimenez. Are you thinking of Jimenez? Or no, 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 I'm, no, no, no. Okay. I'm thinking of Triore in the sense of muscle and power oh, right, and energy. Right, right. But yeah. I I like Jimenez. That's and I think he got injured against us, right? That, yeah, but he's yeah, Triore, yeah. for me, he's like a super sub for Wolves. Wolves. Yes. And he has really yeah. good games and he comes on and off. He's too inconsistent for me. I don't know. I love Ollie Watkins. I love the idea that he's in love with Arsenal and that he's uh, he's a gooner. Um, Ivan Tony, yes, uh, I like him as well. And yeah, I don't want any injury prone players, Tammy. You're absolutely right. Um, but I, I don't mind. A lot of people like Ivan Tony too. I don't think we're going to get our striker for real until the summer. I think what we have to do is try and figure out a way to get through and hope that the goals keep coming from the Martinelli's, the Sackers, the Emil Smith Rose, and everyone has to stay fit. If we're, if because our, you you were talking about the Arsenal women, the downgrade after now we're right. upgrading that the the Arsenal Arsenal men's team need to do the same as well. Right. That's it. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Thank you to Demian. Before we go, Thank this you. might be a little bit self-indulgent because we live in Los Angeles, but I, I do want to say that when I heard, and I wanted you to chime in on this a little bit, you guys will know and you would have seen films um, and films like Swingers. Uh, Marty and Elaine, the Dresden. Marty, I don't know if you saw the story, uh, Demian. He passed away yesterday. They have been the king of, I don't know, is it jazz music? Whatever you it's want. It's a lounge, they play. jazz, comedy, show tune, a combination of things. Just brilliant nostalgia and history uh, in the LA scene. And if you are, we have a lot of Arsenal Los Angeles folks that listen to the show, Arsenal America folks, and these guys are legends here. And if you've seen the film Swingers, you will know about the Dresden and Marty and Elaine. Um, so, you know, just wanted to say that sad news and as a transported Angelino-esque, um, now living a little bit, 50 <laughs> miles little south, south <laughs> of yeah. there, I just yeah. wanted to give them a little, hey, 
Um, I I appreciate it. I love that. And you as a I musician on today, I just wanted to touch on that just a little Thank bit. Thank you. I love that. I once played a show behind the Dresden and I was, uh, I went to grab a drink back when I drank. So this is like 10 years ago. Uh, and they were there and I couldn't believe it. It was like transported myself to this different era of life and it was just magical. So may he rest mm -hmm. in peace and uh, all the best really to, to their family and, yeah. and th they leave a void for sure. Definitely. Just definitely yeah. watch swingers. You guys, you won't regret it. It's just, yes. uh, it's really what kind of added that pop culture vibe and, and element to it as well. So if you didn't live here, it was something that you got to learn and know about. That's what we love about the movies. That's what we love about music. If you come on here one more time and don't bust out one of those guitars and play something for these <laughs> kids, I tell you, they'll have your guts for garters. Definitely. I'll see. I'll play drums, which is my actual instrument. So next time, I promise you, I'll play some drums for you. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yes, Absolutely promise. brilliant. Let everyone know where they can find you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate you, and much love to Kevin as well. Uh, they can find me in all socials uh, at Demian Arriaga. If you like what I had to say about Arsenal women. I have a podcast called that Arsenal women podcast that you can find in all platforms. And from time to time, I talk about Arsenal on my Twitch stream. Otherwise it's just twitch.tv slash Demi and Ariaga. And I play drums. I take requests and sometimes I play bass and guitar and I talk about the music industry and so on and so forth. So, uh, as always, Sophie, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. And, um, I'm just grateful to to share my time with you and, and, and I value that you all value what I have to say. So thank you. We love your take on life, uh, first and foremost. Thank you. Women's football, uh, Arsenal women, and of course the Arsenal um, men's team as well. But thank what you. I love about our conversations, it feels like we're just having a, a glass of vino or punch, you know, and just chilling, whether it's at the pub or some awesome cafe somewhere in LA or Europe. Yes, um, that's, agreed. That's uh, my favorite. That's what, it, that's what it feels like. And we get two nines from Newman, which is quite nice. The score, wow, it's pretty. I'm uh, impressed. By the way. Yeah. I, I'm very impressed. All right. Thanks to everyone. The show returns tomorrow evening after the EFL Cup second leg semi final against the Scousers. That is right. Super Kevin Campbell will return, and I will be back too. And we will hopefully be waxing lyrical about our team and bragging about being in another final at Wembley Let's against go. Chelsea. Until Come then, Addy squaddies. <laughs>